I used to believe this too. My fatness 100% keeps me from trying to date. I can't imagine anyone would find my body attractive. So I'm gonna ask a non-body related question. Without thinking about it, I want you to answer the first thing that comes to your mind. Ready? What is the best flavor of ice cream? Vanilla. Go. I can guarantee you that we all did not pick the same flavor. If you said chocolate, you were right. But truly, I'm not gonna yuck your yum if you didn't say chocolate. People who say that body size is a disqualifying factor is yucking someone else's yum. It's not even remotely close. Like, okay, I'm sure that if you ask somebody that question and somebody said, my favorite flavor of ice cream is Indonesian deep fried foreskin, you know, ice cream. That is my favorite flavor of ice cream. I'm sure there are uh, numerous amounts of people, probably greater than five people in the world that like that particular thing. But it doesn't matter because it's not even remotely close, okay? So ice cream, for the most part, doesn't really have a lot of downward effects besides maybe the fact that it's high in calories, right? If you're dating somebody that literally weighs way, 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 way more than what they should weigh. It's only a detriment to date that person. I'm not saying that person isn't a great person. I'm not saying they don't have great character traits. I'm not saying that they're not funny, charismatic, and all this other stuff. And you can even find that person attractive. That's awesome. But one thing that we have to acknowledge, though, is that when you weigh way more than what you're supposed to weigh, there are going to be tremendous health complications due to the fact that you are that size, okay? These things could be something as simple as aches and pains, bad, bad hormone levels because your body's consistently always on life support because you're like perpetually dying. Um, or it could just be like something like high blood pressure, uh, diabetes, core morbidities. All these things are going to impede your ability to live life adequately, um, especially if you're with somebody else, okay? Not even to mention the fact that you may not even be attracted to them, but whatever, okay? There's those things that are all... Uh, across the board that are going to be bad for you. Not something as simple as, oh, what flavor of ice cream it is. To, to, to try to boil down the fact that you your, your fatness is just like another flavor of ice cream is actually so incredibly disingenuous. And, and, and majorly, 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 uh, uh, it doesn't make any sense. Like, it, it's so, it's so it's like, I see where you're going with that because you're trying to make it seem like it's not as big as a deal as it actually is, but it is. It's a massive deal. Um, and there are going to be tremendous hurdles that you're going to have to cross when you date somebody. And everybody knows this when you date somebody it takes a lot of deliberate effort to make that relationship work you have to compromise on things you're gonna have to talk about stuff you don't want to talk about because oftentimes in order for anything to get done significantly you're gonna have to have that communication so if somebody is very very overweight or obese right it's gonna be very difficult for you to have that conversation and tell that person that you oh hey uh you're very very obese we need to have this conversation you're you know presumably dying and we should probably do something about that. Now, a lot of people don't want to have that conversation um, because they know that if they say that, it's going to be hurting to that person's feelings, but it's going to have to be something that you said. Or you could just find somebody that just doesn't say it to you in general, and they're just like passively enabling you to gain more weight or just stay at that weight, which we know is bad for you. So, no, I reject this. I reject this. It doesn't make any sense. Um, you trying to make it seem like it's just a flavor of ice cream is actually <laughs> incredible. Um, your thought process is flawed, and you have... Dander flakes on your shoulder. Body size is a disqualifying factor is yucking someone else's yum. It's it's whatever. Like if you want to date fat ladies or you want to date fat guys, you can. I don't care if you do. I just wish that most of these people would acknowledge the fact that when you do date somebody of that size, there's going to be a lot of issues there. There's going to be a lot of problems there. You're literally on life support every single day when you're fat. It's There's no other way to say it than that. Your body is li quite literally not supposed to be that size. And you're casually just walking around with that weight as if it means nothing at all. It's a big health indicator, okay? A lot of people see fat people and they can immediately know that person is dying and maybe some more than others. Like, I'm not saying you're going to die right now. I'm not saying you're going to die tomorrow, but definitely in time, you're definitely reducing your lifespan by a drastic amount. But anyway. Someone on another video said that they worry about people fetishizing their body. That's a different video. We'll talk about that in a minute. It makes sense that you think this. Because it's true. Because it's true. 100%. Um, most people are not attracted to fat people. It's obvious in the same way that mo most people are not really into Indonesian foreskin ice cream because it's not very good at all. And there's probably a lot of health uh, defects to eating that Indonesian. Like if we were to do the ice cream thing, it'd basically be like, okay, do you like vanilla ice cream? Beautiful vanilla ice cream, you know, whatever. Compared to Indonesian deep fried uh, all, you know, oregano or oregano, depending on how you, you say it ketchup, um, and also a little bit of, mm, you know, a little bit of Chernobyl dust, like just a little bit of some toxic radiation on there. It's not too bad though. You probably won't die. 
um, right away, but it might increase your chances of getting cancer, you know, in the not too distant future. Like that would be the equivalent. You're eating something that's not necessarily bad right now, but you know it's going to lead to bad stuff in the future. Um, which one are you going to prefer? I'm going for the fucking vanilla ice cream. Not because only I like vanilla ice cream, but because I don't want to, you know, Indonesian deep fried foreskin ice cream is also not what I want. Also, I don't want the Chernobyl, you know, little dust on there either, but yeah, it's it's not it's not the same. Ice cream is like not anywhere close to the to the ice to the the obesity argument. Because of the culture that we've lived and grown up in. These people are so much these people are so victims that they don't even realize that they have literally externalized their entire lives and they haven't they have never taken any time to actually think about what they can do to improve their situation and instead they have ceded that to the society at large, which is never going to be good for you because you can't do anything about it. Um, if your car breaks down, what are you going to do? Well, most people would probably go to a body shop, go to a mechanic and try to get the car fixed, right? But in her in her mind, the way she's thinking about it, she would just sit there on the side of the road and cry and say that society broke her car because the road was incomplete and whatever happened, happened, right? Uh, and then do nothing. No calling anybody. She would just sit there in perpetual pain because her car is busted. That's what she wants you to do. Don't do anything about your problem, even though it's your problem, but instead, just sit there and complain about it relentlessly and do nothing about it. That's what she wants you to do. Don't solve your own problem, guys. It makes sense that you think this because of the culture that we've lived and grown up in. We get the choice to opt out of the beauty standard. Sure, you can opt out of the beauty standard, but odds are when you opt out of the beauty standard, no, like nobody's coming with you. Like, that's fine. You can, I'm sure you could find somebody that also doesn't opt out of the beauty standard. Like, I, I would often, I would often ask these people, like, what are you looking for in a guy? Like, are you okay with that guy opting out of a beauty standard? Like, are you totally fine with that guy just never shaving, um, never getting a haircut, doesn't wear deodorant, wears pants that don't fit them, um, beats off on their jeans consistently? Uh, are you okay with that? Are you all right with that? Like, are you okay with a guy that opts out of a beauty standard? Because that is basically the same thing you're asking right now. Are you okay also with dating a man that's literally on life support every single day because he is physically so incredibly obese that he can't get up out of the bed or whatever are you okay with that no are you not okay with that why are you if you are so compatible and you don't look at beauty standards why are you single that's what i would want to know because it's too easy for these people to say you can't fire me i quit and they're lying they're just lying outright because you're opting out of the beauty standard but like you still do your hair you still do your makeup you still choose to wear the clothes that society approves of you still choose to drive your car like you still do all these things that society recommends you doing but for some reason this one thing which is obesity you've just adamantly disqualified yourself from because you don't want to change or you think that obesity shouldn't be what a big deal why though why would you think that obesity is that, that that big of a deal compared to something like wearing deodorant? In my opinion, being obese is much more significant than compared to somebody wearing deodorant, right? I just don't understand how these people, like, how they have that series of events go on in their brain. You know what I'm talking about? Like, how do you get to one, two, three, four on that event? I just don't understand, man. Um, usually there is a a series of evolutions there, right? You start off at zero and then you go up to 10, but it seems like they just started at 10. I just don't understand how they got there, bro. And uh, these people refuse to take accountability. In which the world has set. So what if you went into dating thinking, there are people who will disqualify me because of my fatness. Yes. But maybe there will also be people who will not. You can go into dating thinking that, but that'd be like, that you're, you're sure. You know what? Fine. Go ahead. If that's what you want to do. Um, but it requires you to do nothing. Most people probably want to work on themselves a little bit. It'd be like the equivalent of a guy have no job, perpetually in debt, um, living with his parents, thinking that he's actually valuable to a woman in any way. Probably not. So, I mean, you can, I'm sure there is a woman out there that will accept your bum ass that there is probably women out there that will accept that. No problem. Right. But what are the averages going to look like on that? What are the average going to look like when you meet up with women and they find out you have no job and you smell like must perpetually, right? What are the averages going to be like when you think you're going to find a woman that's going to accept all those terrible character traits you have compared to somebody that has all those things set in stone? In the same way that when you're obese, you can go into the dating market and think, like, oh, I'm a valuable individual. I have a lot going for me. I'm just fat, right? You can totally go into the dating market think of that. But usually the market, like, picks and chews. Like, you, your value is going to be determined based off the market. 100% when you start dating, I'm sure there are guys out there that are going to think you're attractive as a fat woman. But that's most definitely not going to be the majority. And you're literally playing a gamble. You're gambling every single day 
um, playing with that. And, you know, it's, it's all fun and games right now when you're in your 20s. But, like, when you hit your 30s, dude, you're going to start realizing, holy shit, dude, I haven't been on a date in literally, like, fucking, I don't know, eight years. And, you know, my, you know, my vagina is perpetually... <laughs> Because I haven't had that, or like your penis is just so incredibly dry that the only lubricant that you've ever had on there is like, I don't know, the spit from your own hand because you're trying to emulate a woman's mouth. I don't know, whatever, dude. And before anybody gets mad at me about using the example of ice cream. It's, I have no problem with using that example of ice cream. It doesn't make any sense, but I make sense that you would use that, exa that example since you probably have the ice cream on the brain consistently. People who will not. And before anybody gets mad at me about using the example of ice cream, somebody saying they don't like someone's body because it's not their type is a form of discrimination true so what i don't care i don't care when people say this by the way um i you know i don't like like certain types of breads i don't like certain types of chicken i don't like certain types of steaks i don't like certain types of things and i discriminate against those things because i don't like those things um i don't even know what the implication here is by saying this like you're discriminated against like really you discriminate against fat women because you don't want to date them. So you discriminate against men that you don't want to date, right? Do you not discriminate against dudes that come onto the date with like snot running down their nose and they have perpetual must bubbles underneath their armpits and you know they go to the bathroom and they they char they carve out a hole on the side of the brim of the the next all over so that way they could suck a quick BBC before they come back out? Like you're disqualifying you're disqualifying those guys. What's the point of saying this? Like what are you even trying to imply here? Please. Body because it's not their type. And by the way, don't feel bad for, like, not liking somebody. It's fine, dude. Like, there are plenty of other people out there that you can go for. Um, if somebody's not right for you or you guys have incompatibility, it's okay. Don't worry about it. it don't feel like you're discriminating against somebody. It's a form of discrimination. So? It is an internal bias that needs to get examined. I don't like dating men because I am not gay. Uh, am I discriminated against men? Yeah, because I have no need for male genitalia in my mouth. I don't in, I don't enjoy the sensation of another man's foreskin within my mouth. I don't like the the bigness of uh, a, a man's BBC. I don't like any of that. I prefer the ingestion of a woman's anatomy in my mouth. And am I discriminated against men for that? Yeah. Do I care? No, because I don't like what do you want me to do? I'm discriminated against them. This is a dumb point. This is a stupid point. She doesn't even believe her own point. Some things are okay. Like, it, it's fine, dude. Like, what is even the point of saying this? You're, you're, that's a stupid point. That was a stupid point that you just said. Your entire argument literally makes zero sense at all. But go it ahead. It is a form of discrimination. It is an internal bias that needs to get examined. The problem is with other things, we can say, ooh, that's wrong. There's something there that we should explore. And usually the world will co-sign when someone says, I'm not attracted to fat people. Not being attracted to someone because of their body size is something you need to look inward at. So when, I'm a, so when I look at a, a, a man and I see a big swinging BBC and I go, ooh, uh, nah, I'm not really for that. Is there something wrong with me internally? Like, how does that work exactly? Like, what are you even trying to say right now? Do you date people without legs? Do you date people without legs? Do you date people without arms? Do you date people that have severe physical, like, m malnourishments? Like, what do you, do you do that? Or no, you don't do that, right? So what are you saying right now? Why are you trying to make other people feel like assholes for not dating fat people when you don't even apply this to your own dating dynamics? You're a bad person for that. And it doesn't even make sense. That's a shit person take. That's a really bad take you just said. Congratulations on having the worst take of the day. That was that was really bad. That was really, really bad. So what I would do is I would start following people who exist in a different size body than you and let yourself be uncomfortable with the smell, be uncomfortable with the smell, the body odor, the absolute must bubbles, the just this, the oh, ah! be comfortable with it. OK, um, it's it's actually a good thing to have plus size friends around with you. OK, so like here's the thing. When it's in the middle of December and it's like 30 degrees Fahrenheit, sorry, um, and you invite your fat friend over, guess what? That guy actually might heat up your whole house just like that. I've even heard stories of BBW water parks where they shut off the heating system in a lot of the, 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 the pools they had and just had thrown in BBWs and the, the water was already starting to boil. It was starting to bubble up and it was beautiful. It was great. I mean, we're, the, the, we're literally inventing new forms of energy. I don't know why we don't just have like a turbine above any of this stuff and have the steam that's coming off of the water of all these BBWs be collected to have energy for all of, I mean, it's, it's like the most that's the best source of renewable energy. BBWs should be 
our source of energy. And of course, you'd want to slide some men in there too, but you know, most guys don't actually wash themselves. At least plus size women for the most part will wash themselves and you don't have to worry about like things, uh, I don't like tiny Cheerios floating amongst the water or like, br you know, like breadcrumbs or something like that. But regardless, man, I don't even know what the fuck we're talking about right now, dude. This woman is actually dumb as hell for what she just said. By the way, just because I'm friends with a bunch of fat people doesn't mean that that does anything for me. Uh, most of these fat people probably don't even believe what you believe, so you don't even mean what you say. Like, nothing you're saying actually has any consistency at all. You want me to hang around fat people that believe what you what you believe, which most fat people don't. Most fat people want to lose weight, and they don't want to be fat, um, but you want me to hang around, like, I don't know, like, body positivity, fat acceptance, people. Like, that's not going to happen, dude. Something you need to look inward at. So what I would do is I would start following people who exist in a different size body than you and let yourself be uncomfortable with their body. Explore and examine the thoughts that come up when you feel that discomfort and ask yourself if those feelings that come up align with the values that you want to live by. This woman, in a quest of trying to dismiss... um cognitive dissonance she has now actually actively contributed to her own cognitive dissonance everything that she said thus far makes zero sense i don't even understand how she even got this far in this video i i can't believe these words fell out of her mouth to make those sentences um the the way that she actually can form these sentences is actually crazy i can't believe that and if not you have some anti-fat bias work that you got and you got some you got some lesbian bias when you don't, don't when you don't date lesbians guess what uh that's some lesbian bias really um when you don't date people that have like zero legs or whatever then you're ableist you have some anti you have some your your ableist bias is showing od there okay um when you don't date guys that don't take care of themselves like they don't wash and stuff like that you're 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 actually showing your anti-cleanliness bias like that is actually terrible i can't believe how disgusting of a person you you see how dumb that is you see how fucking dumb that is brie you see how dumb that is i do i keep thinking about this time i went on a first date with somebody that i matched with on the apps and i knew that they had a partner when we went on our date but when what I learned on the date is that they had gotten fat while they were in their relationship. And so them and their partner had just recently opened up and now they were dating as a fat person for the first time. And so they spent time on the date telling me like, did you know dating as a fat person is really hard? Like people are terrible. And I was like, yeah, <laughs> yeah, I knew that actually. <laughs> um, yeah, we didn't have a second date. Um, but this is why I maintain that they should invent dating apps for single people. So you met up with somebody that was already in a relationship or married and they opened up, meaning what? Like they opened up to dating other people, I guess, because this woman or man presumably gained weight and they didn't find the other person attractive in that relationship anymore. And the solution was to date other people and then come to the realization that, oh wait, damn, my partner might have been valid in telling me that it's unattractive for me to gain weight. By the way, look, when you're dating somebody, like and you're in a relationship with that person, you should want to be attractive to that other person that you're dating. So when you're dating that person and they go, hey, I really like the way you wear those crop tops. Hey, I really like when you wear these shoes. I really like the way that you look right now. It's okay to continue doing what that person thinks is attractive. Um, you know, like for instance, I know when I date other people, they like it when I have don't have a mustache. Go fuck yourself. I'm gonna keep the mustache. You can't say I can't keep the mustache. Or like, oh David, I like when you wear deodorant. Okay, I can wear deodorant. I like when you dress up. Okay, I can dress up. Um, I like the way that you buy these clothes. I like the way that you dress here. That's fine. I can do those things for you. And you should want to. You should want to be attracted to the person that you're with, and you should actively be contributing to that um, almost every day, at least, like, try to. And when you become unattracted to that individual by, by whatever that may be, and you don't think that that's an issue, that's why wouldn't you think that's an issue? Why would you think that that person is not entitled to find you attractive? Uh, do you not think – like, I understand there are people out there that think that – love is perpetual and it's forever which is not true by the way um just because it's like just because you can love that person doesn't mean you can't find them unattractive there are several reasons why somebody can look at somebody and go nope this person is unattractive and weight is going to be definitely one of them if you started dating that person and they were like 120 pounds but then like over the period of like a year they gained an extra 80 pounds another 200 pounds they're going to be probably unattracted to you by that point um what are you expecting like you think they're just going to stay in that relationship even though you're fundamentally unattractive okay let me ask you a question 
when you're in a relationship with somebody and they start doing crack and heroin and they get like really, really invested into it, are you not going to have a problem with that? Or are you just going to go, oh, no, Slay Queen, you're totally great. You know, get in your crack bag era or whatever, dude. What are you talking about? No, obviously fucking not. Yes, it's hard to date while fat because there are actual problems while being fat. This person says, just to be clear, you can call men broke, but they can't call you fat. I am fat. I am self-subscribed fat. And guess what? I still make money. Nike pays my bills. I still go out with high value, high earning men. Where's your relationship at, though? She's been dating high value men for like over a year. Since I've seen this woman, she's been dating, dating high value men for like over a year or maybe even more at this point. She always brags about it, too, about how, you know, she gets men that drop bags on her and spend all this money on her and shit like that. Uh, it, where is your relationship, dude? You've been dating for this long and you got no relationships, bro. OK, I mean, shit, dude, it sounds like a lot of these guys don't want to commit to you, huh? Maybe there's something wrong with you, or maybe you have something about you that's just not appetizing for a lot of these people, right? No? Is there nothing there? I don't know, bro. I don't know. Sometimes I feel like I understand what this person is saying, like this woman, um, but it's almost kind of like really weird. It's really weird when people like don't – like you're trying to you're trying to clap back, but it's not the clap back you think it is. It actually makes you look very insecure because now you're trying to – like you're projecting outwardly that you're insecure about the fact that you're fat. Like – I don't know, man. Whatever, bro. Go ahead. And go my go off, pays queen. my bills. I still go out with high value, high earning men. By the way, a model here. I don't know what they model, but they model. And my being fat has not stopped me from any of that. Period. Has it stopped you from like finding a relationship though? Period. True. So if anyone's curious how dating in LA is going, um, I matched with this guy on Hinge last night, and we were chatting a bit, and he basically like asked me on a date, and. He uh, asked me for my Instagram, and I give him my Instagram, and, you know, I wait a little bit, whatever. I go back on Hinge, and he unmatches me, right? And then I go on Instagram, and, like, no DM, no follow, no liked photos, no message request, just okay. nothing. Disappeared, thin air. You probably saw that you had a social media following. A lot of guys don't like it when women have social media followings. It's not really the same with women. Like, a lot of women do like it when a guy is established. But for a lot of women, a lot of guys get turned off by it because they think that you're getting a lot of attention. A lot of guys don't want to deal with a woman that gets a lot of attention, which is justifiable. It's fine, right? It's not It's not usually the same, the vice versa. Um, there's that. And it's also because this woman is chronically overweight. Um, she's had the same issue now for over, like, two years, I think. And we made a video on this person, and uh, she made a response video and she called me a caveman and things like that. I'm sure you can still find the video um, on my channel somewhere. I don't know. Like, I publish videos, like, every single day, so it's probably going to be hard for you to backtrack, like, six months ago. But still having the same problems to this day. It's really sad because um, all the things that I prescribe to this individual to do in order to acquire a man, which is something they want, by the way. They talk about it consistently. Uh, she has not done. And she's consistently not changed, and nothing has happened for the better for her So in terms of dating. So it's just, like... It hurts me sometimes because it's like if you keep doing something and it, you get the same result continuously over and over and over again, why do you keep doing it? Like you, you got to realize to some degree it's not it's not them. It's you. So why don't you do something to alleviate your problem instead of just complaining about it consistently? But it doesn't matter, dude. Um, yeah, it was probably because you were very fat or, <laughs> you know, like, I mean, look. If I look at your Instagram, granted, like I'm looking at your Instagram, I could probably see that you have your TikTok linked. I'm going to click on your TikTok. I'm going to see that you have a whole bunch of red flag videos of men not dating you as well. She has literally like her entire TikTok catalog is literally just, oh, another man declined me. Oh, can't find a date. Oh, uh, people think I'm unattractive. Just insecurity to the max. That's not attractive for most people. Like if I go on your TikTok and I find that you have nothing but in videos of just you being insecure, consistent, insecure consistently, that's not attractive. That is going to be very concerning. And most people are not going to like that. So that is probably a big reason why that dude probably didn't want to talk to you anymore. And then also because you were fat. And then also because you have a big social media following. It's you know, there's a lot of things there. Um, I don't know if this has anything to do necessarily with most women. Most women won't have to deal with this because she's in a very niche bracket. But uh, yeah, dude. Uh, let's let's hear what she has to say about Message that. Message request. Just nothing disappeared thin air so what it's just one guy on the like how many matches do women get on on dating apps you know like uh probably i remember i was talking to one girl that told me that when she was on um tinder she literally had 
6,000 likes in like three days, which is an astronomical amount of likes. Oh my God. Holy shit. 6,000 likes. You got it. You okay. Like one of those 6,000, um, I'm sure leaving that DM, like whatever. Does it matter? No, it doesn't matter. Like, forget about it. I don't even know what the point of talking about this individual was. It's a nothing. It turns into nothing. So what? It's nothing. So that's, that's how we're doing. Here. That's, that doesn't really like whatever at that point. I don't care. Like you, you just, it's just a random guy. It shouldn't matter. Yeah. It's sad. Hit me out real quick. I don't understand what it is about me and when they start dating plus size women and always having to bring up, yeah, I love me a plus size girl. You know what I'm saying? I like me a BBW. Yeah, it's super concerning, dude. Uh, I don't like that either. I don't like it either, dude. So many dudes will think that that's like a, a, a good thing to say to a woman because Oh, like, she has to know that I'm totally into dating plus-size women. Well, you're dating her right now, right? So, like, it's okay. We understand. You like plus-size women. She, Like, you're telling her that passively. You don't have to be outright telling her that. It's going to be red flag for most people. That'd be, like, the equivalent. Can you hear the ice cream truck? That'd be, like, the equivalent if I dated a woman and she was like, mm, I love me some light skin. I love me some. Like, you ever watch Pop the Balloon? We watch Pop the Balloon sometimes on stream here on this channel. By the way, we stream almost every single day. So, join in on the stream if you ever see me streaming. Um, make sure you like, comment, subscribe to the video as well. But uh, I, one thing I've noticed is I've heard a lot of people just deny dudes or women based off of things they have absolutely no control over. Like, oh, damn, sorry, girl. Sorry, girl, you too light skin for me. I don't fuck with light skins. Same thing with women. Mm, sorry, you're like a little bit too light for me. And I need like, I need a dork man. I need a dork man. And it's like, damn, bro, that's really fucked up. And uh, some of these guys will actually be darker than the women. It's really fucked up. A lot of colorism. A lot of racism, um, and same thing here. If a guy says he likes you just because you, you know, I love me a, I love me a BBW, I love me a, I love me a B, a big black woman, then that's cool, bro. But uh, that's also like cringe as fuck. Don't say that shit. Stop talking about. It. Stop putting. When you date somebody, stop putting them in like generalization brackets. Like try to be. Try not to talk about them physically as much as you can. It's okay to talk about, like, what they're wearing. Oh, that's a really nice dress. Oh, wow, you got your nails done. Those look really, really nice. Tell me about the acrylics. Where'd you get them? Uh, maybe make some jokes about it. What Indonesian parlor did you go to in order to get these nails done? How much did they cost? Did they try to scam you? I don't know. Uh, tell me about these shoes. Where'd you get these schools? shoes? Macy's? Oh, Macy's where? And then you talk about that stuff. Um, but not so much about the body. Not so much about, and I don't know what it works. I don't know how it works out for the women's side. Most guys are down bad anyway. So you even talking to a guy in general, he probably already pre-busted in his pants. Um, and he's thinking about the life he's going to have with you. Uh, so you probably don't have to do much as a woman. I don't know though. I don't, I don't date men. So I have no idea how that works. But for a lot of men, I would recommend stop commenting on women's bodies. And uh, if you are going to comment on something physical, do something that involves what they're wearing, clothing items, but try not to be creepy about it. And then... Because how many women are getting compliments on a daily basis? Even if they do look like bags of potatoes, they still probably get tons and tons of compliments. Stop putting yourself in a bracket with the rest of those guys. And y'all think that's a traitor. Because at the end of the day, I know you saw my pictures. Man, it just sounds like she's smoking like every single day, dude. Like her voice is just gone, man. And y'all think that's a traitor. Because at the end of the day, I know you saw my pictures. I know you saw me what I look like. So I will hope that you are a traitor to me. I don't need to know. If a guy usually does that, it's probably because they want to have sex with you, which sucks, but it is what it is. I mean, that's what that's what uh, dating apps are for the most part, like a whole bunch of dudes hitting you up, trying to smell your vagina or like smell the back of your ankle or something like that. So, you know, it's up to you to discern that. I would always recommend dating a man, dating as in like going on dates, um, maybe two, three, four times before you give up the vagina. Because a lot of guys are just there to, you know, like a, a guy can drop $100, $200 on you for some vagina. It's like whatever for him, so. What I look like, because I look at myself every day in the mirror. Are you trying to convince yourself? What you um, whenever I see people that are very, very big, and I see that they're wearing straps, this always seems so uncomfortable for me. Because it's like, you ever see hams, like Christmas hams, when they have to tie them up? And they have like, like it's like strangling the, the meat a little bit. That's what that reminds me of. Look like, but then on the flip side of the coin, you have the women that are plus size and that are insecure. But that ain't what this is over here. And on some real stuff, like, if y'all know that you don't value yourself like that in a certain light and you need validation from people still, you need to work on yourself instead of dating because you make people's outlook on women of different 
body types or whatever look bad. And at the end of the day, you can't change how everybody look. It's kind of hard to understand what she's saying uh, because, like, her dialect is very, very, like, disjointed. And then also the way she, like, her voice for some reason is, like, super coarse. Like, she's been grab like she's been gargling rocks or gravel or something. Right. Like a meat grinder almost. Like, somebody threw some, somebody threw, like, a, a couple pennies inside of a meat grinder or something. By the tights or whatever, look bad. And at the end of the day, you can't change how everybody look. I, I get that. But at the same time, like, stop dating if you insecure. Like, just don't True, date. Man, you need fine. to really work on that inner man, like, that inner self. And be like, you know what, let me. And the woman, man, whatever, however you want to put it. But it Sounds like a younger man's problem. Usually when you get older, you realize, like, you just got to stop complimenting women like that. Work on yourself and be like. It's a red flag for most women. <laughs> It's okay, by the way, when you're in a relationship and you want to comment on your girl's body. Damn, your butt cheeks are looking quite domesticated today. Wow. Wow. Your, your vagina is quite d voluptuous. I love the way it is shaped. Your, I can see your butthole, and it's so great. Wow, your areolas are so delectable. It's fine if you want to do that. That's fine when you're in a relationship because once you're in a relationship, things have changed, and now you are committed to that person, so it's totally fine to do that. Um, and same thing for girls. Like, if you want to comment on your guy's body, you should do that. Wow. Your pectoral muscles are looking quite voluptuous. They are looking quite big today. Wow. Your penis is quite meaty. That is a very, very delicioso penis. Wow. Can I see it again? You, you say stuff like that, but not like that. You obviously say it with a little bit more sensualness to it. Let me get myself together. Depending on who you're with, of course. Before I start trying to date people because... Like bongos, man. No, this ain't that what it is over here. I'm not that girl. Don't try me like that no more. I don't like that. One thing about being fat that is kind of weird is that I feel like I can't really have a discussion about love, romance, dating, any of that, and especially my personal history with it, without like some acknowledgement of desirability politics. Like every time I get into a conversation about this stuff, I feel like, and I have to sort of caveat that's like, well, this wasn't as available to me because I'm not conventionally attractive. But it's like, you don't want to have to put that in people's heads when you are having the first conversation with them about this. You know what I mean? Like, if I'm meeting a new friend, I don't want to be like, and you know, because I'm not attractive. But it's like, that's so heavily played into my experience and lack thereof that it's like, how am I supposed to have a conversation about anything in the realm of love or romance without that? How often do people have conversations about relationships? That's something I want to know. They maybe leave it down below in the comment section. I don't, like when I'm talking to my, maybe this is just like me, but I don't have conversations about relationships very often with my guy friends. We're usually talking about other things or meaningless things that have absolutely nothing to do with anything in general. Like, I don't know. Maybe this is different for a lot of people. Like, it's okay to talk about dating. No, no issue at all. Um, but... Okay, so, like, what I'm hearing from this person is, like, oh, whenever this does come up in conversation, which seems like to be a lot, um, she has to tell people that she's never really had the relatability compared to that other person because she's never been in the bracket of being desirable enough to have that thing be a possibility, which is very, very sad, by the way. I don't know how you have so many examples or you have to, like, keep saying that same thing. And you have never changed like anything about yourself to get out of that so you could be in a better bracket to have those things that you quote unquote desire. So I don't know, like I guess like just tell that person in a blunt way, like, yeah, I'm just fat and ugly. I don't know, like I can't get manses and stuff like that. I don't know, like why is this even an issue to this degree? Like I'm in a Why can't you just like lo lose weight and find those people that, that want to be with you? Relationship now, but before that I had zero experience and I never thought I would be in a relationship. And it also kind of sounds really pick me to be like, oh, yeah, well, you know, it's just great that your boyfriend, you know, it's, it's really great that your boyfriend, like, treats you so well, but, like, no man has ever wanted me because I'm just fat and I'm just ugly. And you keep saying that every time it comes up in a relationship. Like, I don't want to be your friend anymore. You're, you're, you're a Debbie Downer. You're, you're a negative Nelly. I don't want to be with you. Negative Nancy, get away. I don't like you. You're always so sad about not having boyfriends, and you never want to do anything about it, and you never want to improve your situation. Stop complaining to me about it. I don't want to be your friend. It's, it's, you know what? I would be upset by this. And that's, like, heavily impacted my philosophy on life and relationships, and I just don't, I can't, like, talk about it without an acknowledgement of that. But again, it feels freaking weird to have to like immediately be like, and you know, because of my appearance, which I'm sure you've noticed, like, it's just weird. How many times have you said this though? 
like how, how has this become this often that you have to like actually make a video about all the times that you have to tell people how busted you are? Cause I don't want to like come in and make people think that I, I'm, you know, have low self-esteem or whatever. When it's like, in some ways I do, but in a lot of ways I don't. And I'm just reacting to the way the world has kind of categorized me and the experiences I've had because of how I'm categorized. I mean, she could just like, she could just lose weight and she wouldn't have to deal with any of that. But I guess she found a man's now that's going to enable her to be in that bad body, which is fine. Like, it's great. It's awesome. I'm so happy that you found somebody that's going to love you for who you are, or whatever bullshit you've like, I don't know, coped with so, whatever bullshit that you, you, whatever coping you're sniffing in order to, to stay in that relationship, whatever, bro. I'm happy it's working for you. But regardless, guys, that's the end of the video here. If you enjoyed today's video, I appreciate it for everybody to leave a like, comment, subscribe, sharing the video, all those things I'd appreciate tremendously. So if you can uh, do any of this stuff for me, I would appreciate that tremendously. It helps me grow in the algorithm. Um, so thank you. Uh, if you watch the video in its entirety and or you're here right now, leave it down below by typing in cherries because cherries are beautiful and they look like nut sacks apparently. People have told me that if you use the cherry emojis, then that makes it like you're talking about nut sacks, which I was not aware that that was what it was. But now I can kind of see it a little bit like nut sacks, right? Which I'm not too concerned about um, when it comes to like sexual activities. I know a lot of women that do like nut sacks. Why? Um, they're weird. They move around sometimes when you're not doing anything and they are, I mean, it's cool that they exist. Obviously I would rather have them than not, but, uh, please don't touch them very often. It's okay if your hand like grazes past them or something like that, or you want to compliment the shapeliness of them. Thank you so much. But that's about it. You know what I'm saying? Like that's, that's about it, dude. Uh, it's like my butthole. Like don't even acknowledge it. I mean, it's okay. It's better to acknowledge the, the nuts. I don't even know what we're talking about, but you're a beautiful person. I care for you. I care for you quite a bit. Um, I was seeing that spoon that you had earlier today, and it was uh, very well nicely cleaned. I saw the way you were cleaning it, and it was delightful the way that you were able to accurately and, and very, very cleanly be able to, like, polish that up with the soap of the sink. That's amazing. That's beautiful, and I think that's amazing uh, that you can harvest that environment so, so dramatically to ensure that every one of your dishes are properly cleansed. That is amazing, and that's awesome character development. But anyway, guys, we're going to end the video here. If you want to check out my social media, it will be linked down below in the description. Enjoy the rest of your day, guys.